Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiga High School. I'm Brian Brown, and today we'll be looking at section 4.3 of the chapter dealing with acid-base reactions. Now, yesterday we looked at just some general solution terminology, net anionic equation writing, and so forth, and we looked at precipitation metathesis reactions. Today we're going to be looking at acid-base neutralization metathesis reactions. And before we get into that, we need to do a quick review of ideas related to acid and base chemistry. So Arrhenius defined acids as substances that increase the concentration of H plus when dissolved in water. So started with a hydrogen, had ionizable hydrogen, you were an acid. Now Bronsted and Lowry define them as proton donors. Well, an H plus is really just a proton because a hydrogen atom has one proton, one electron. When you lose your electron, you get an H plus. So when you're talking about hydrogen atoms in acids, what you're really looking at is an H plus that's stuck to, or multiple H pluses that are stuck to an anion. So what you're really talking about is protons. So when we talk about H pluses with bronsted lowry definition, we're tracking acid and bases as um, things that are giving a proton would be an acid, and things that receive the proton would be acting like a bronsted lowry base. Now, there's three fundamental types of acids that we'll end up talking about. So these are acid terminology that you should really be familiar with. Monoprotic acids have one ionizable H+, plus, something like hydrochloric acid would be monoprotic. A diprotic acid would be like sulfuric acid. It has two ionizable H+. Pluses. And then something like phosphoric acid has three ionizable H+. Pluses. So you've got monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic. Now one thing I want to mention, and we are going to come back to this from time to time throughout the year, when you have H2SO4, H2SO4 is one of our strong acids. Now it's a monoprotic or a diprotic acid, but really only one of those protons ionizes 100%. That's why it's a strong acid. Only one of the H pluses ionizes 100%. HSO4 minus, what you get when the first H plus leaves is not going to ionize to any great degree. It ionizes partially. So really, when you have something like H2SO4 and you call it a strong acid, that only means, doesn't mean both the hydrogens uh, dissociate. It really only means one of the hydrogens dissociates. So that's something we'll come back to later. Now, there are only seven strong acids. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, chloric acid, and perchloric acid. You need to memorize these. Why? Well, you already took one test that dealt with strong acids and bases. You had to memorize it for that. Well, in this chapter, we're going to do a number of things. And in future chapters, where you have to know the strong acids, we already looked a little bit at this yesterday in the notes. So you have to know those seven. Now, bases, Arrhenius defined bases as substance that increase the concentration of OH- minus in water. So if it has ionizable hydroxide, then it's an Arrhenius base. Bronsted-Lowry defined them as proton acceptors. When you accept an H+, plus, um, then you are acting as a base. So whatever accepts the proton is the Bronsted-Lowry base. Whatever donates it was the Bronsted-Lowry acid. Now, there are eight strong bases, and once again, you have to memorize them. The alkali metal hydroxides, as well as the heavy group two. Remember the CBS, if you re rearrange the order a little bit, or just think of it as heavy group two. Those are your eight strong bases. And remember, once again, you have to know these, because if you see a base, you see something hydroxide, in many situations, it's really important that you understand whether it's strong or weak as to, as to how it behaves. So just like strong acids have to be memorized, know your strong bases. This will be on the test over chapter four. Now, acid-base reactions. In an acid-base reaction, the acid donates a proton, H plus, to the base. So a acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Now you can see in the drawing here, H2O and H3, H2O is acting like a acid in this case because it's donating the H plus to the NH3. And you know that because NH3 becomes NH4 plus. It gained a proton. So in this particular case, H2O is acting like the acid. Now generally when solutions of an acid and a base are combined, you get a double replacement metathesis reaction, but you also typically get a salt and water. Now, a salt is any ionic compound whose cation comes from a base and whose anion comes from the acid. So when we talk about, you know, hand me some salt in the kitchen, that's just one type of salt. 
yes, NaCl can be formed from a reaction between hydro hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So that is an example of a salt. But common everyday salt, table salt, is really just one of many types of ionic salts. Now, in a water-forming double replacement reaction, you're always going to end up with <coughs> some type of salt, excuse me, and you're going to end up with water as your other product because H plus and OH minus come together to make H H2O. So this particular type of double replacement or metathesis reaction is a water-forming double replacement reaction. Now, when a strong acid reacts with a strong base, the net ionic equation is always going to end up giving you the same thing. If you really look at all of your aqueous strong acids and bases, they dissociate 100%, HCl and NaOH, and you look at your NaCl as a soluble ionic compound, it dissociates. When you can't say, cancel your spectators, you'll notice that all that really happens in an acid-base reaction between a strong acid and a strong base is you're going to end up forming water. Chemically, that's all that really happens. And that's how they neutralize each other. The species that contains the H plus reacts with a species that contains the OH minus to fundamentally make just plain old water. Now, all metal hydroxides react with acids to always form a salt and water. So when you're looking at the acid and the base, if the base is a metal hydroxide, and it's reacting with any acid you care to write, you're always going to end up forming a salt and water. They just won't have a net ionic equation involving only the formation of water. So it depends really on what you have as to what type of salt you get and whether you get water or not. So in the case of um, acetic acid, which is a weak acid, and sodium hydroxide with a strong base, we've got a metal hydroxide with an acid, so we're always going to get salt and water, so it should make sense that H2O is one of our products. And the salt we get in this case is sodium acetate. Now, when we go to write the net ionic equation for this, you can't just assume the only thing that's going to happen here chemically is you're going to make water, because we don't have a strong acid and a strong base, so not everything is going to cancel. The acetic acid that we have here at the beginning, HC2H3O2, as a weak acid, does not disassociate to any great degree. So that means it stays in its molecular form, which means H plus doesn't cancel out, and CH3O2 doesn't cancel out. Neither of those two are available to cancel anything on the other side. So in this particular case, our anion, C2H3O2, doesn't end up canceling here. And you can see in the net ionic equation, the only thing that really cancels here is the sodium, and we are left with that acetate anion as one of our products still in solution. So in this particular case, it did participate in the reaction. So when you have strong acid, strong base, it's going to break down to only forming water, and that's all that's going to be in the net ionic equation. But if you don't have a uh, strong, strong situation, like in the case of this weak, strong situation, you still get a salt and water, but your net ionic equation does not reduce to H2 plus OH minus yields H2O. So you really have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Strong, strong, yes, always. But if you've got any weeks, you've got to be careful. Not everything is going to cancel. Now, some reactions between acids and bases don't actually yield the expected products. So you don't get a salt in water. And you'll see a couple of situations related to that. There are many bases besides metal hydroxides that react with H plus to form molecular compounds. So they're still going to go a double replacement reaction. That's still going to happen. But what you end up getting isn't always going to be that salt and water type situation. It really just depends on what you've got. Now, there are a few of these that you need to know. Not many, but there are a few that you need to know. The first one we're going to look at here is sulfides. When you have sodium sulfide, which is a substance that can act as a base, so it is a base in this particular reaction. So this is acid base. And we'll get to that much more heavily later in the year. So it's not really important to know at this point that Na2S is acting like a base. What is important is you have sulfuric acid, and it's undergoing a double replacement reaction with a sulfide. That's what you really need to see here. Now, what you end up making is Na2SO4. And instead of water, because we didn't have hydroxide, we had S2 minus, we end up with H2S. And H2S is a gas. It's one of the few compounds, besides H2O, you should know as a liquid, and something like CO2, you should know as a common gas, and so forth. H2S is like CO2. It is a molecular form that you should recognize as a gas. It's a really nasty-smelling rotten egg gas. 
So the predicted reaction in this case, it works just like it did before. It's just a double replacement, but you don't get water in this case. So when you have an acid with a sulfide, you're going to get the gas H2S. And you need to know that so you can write the gas form reaction properly. So this is actually an acid-base reaction. We're just not getting a salt and water. We're getting a salt in this case and hydrogen sulfide gas. Now the next one we're going to look at that you should know, besides sulfides reacting with an acid, you should recognize how carbonates and hydrogen carbonates react. They both fundamentally do the same thing. So whether we're talking about CO3 2 minus or whether we're talking about HCO3 minus, they're going to fundamentally do the exact same thing. Now it is a double replacement reaction, but one of your products is not stable, so it then decomposes and it makes it look harder than it really is. So when you look at this, you think, well, how am I supposed to actually figure out what happened here? Well, first just do a double replacement reaction. You get CaCO3 and HCl reacting with each other. So those are the two things that are gonna react. And, oops, gotta go back. Those two things are gonna react with each other. So do your double replacement. Ca is going to end up with Cl, so we get CaCl2, that's our salt in this particular case, and hydrogen is going to end up with CO3. Now H is a plus 1 and CO3 is a 2 minus, so we get H2CO3. The thing extra you need to recognize here is when we get those two products, our CaCl2 and our H2CO3, you need to know H2CO3 is a substance that is unstable. It's going to pop up from time to time throughout the year. Whenever you have H2CO3, that's not stable, and it's going to break apart into CO2 gas and H2O. So sulfides break apart into hydrogen sulfide gas in the double replacement, and carbonates and hydrogen carbonates are going to get a salt, CO2, and H2O. And once you recognize that it's an acid with a um, metal carbonate, all you really have to do, or even a metal hydrogen carbonate, all you have to do is write your salt that you're going to get, and then write CO2 and H2O. So once I see that it's an acid-base reaction, and it's a carbonate or hydrogen carbonate, I'm just going to write CO2 and H2O plus the salt. Third situation, oh, a couple things about carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. Hydrogen carbonate does the exact same thing because when your Na goes with your Br, you get your salt NaBr, and your H goes with your HCO3, you still get H2CO3. You get the exact same unstable product, which is going to decompose into CO2 gas and H2O. So when you mix these two things together, you're going to see bubbles because you're forming CO2 gas in the liquid, and those things will form as bubbles and come to the surface. So it does the exact same thing as carbonates. So carbonates and hydrogen carbonates, it's going to make the salt and CO2 and H2O. Next one, sulfites. When a sulfite reacts, it also decomposes in really the exact same way. Hydrogen sulfite, H2CO3, or SO3, is unstable and it breaks apart into SO2 and H2O. So you need to think of these three things as all together. So carbonates, hydrogen carbonates, and sulfites all fundamentally do the exact same thing. It's just instead of getting CO2 and H2O in the salt, we're gonna get SO, or, uh, yeah, SO2 and H2O and the salt. So sulfites clump together with the carbonates and the hydrogen carbonates. So we really have sulfides, and then we have our carbonate, hydrogen carbonate, sulfite, which all do the exact same thing. Now, finally, the last one that your book mentions is a nitrite. Now, when nitrite reacts with an acid, the products are going to be a salt, but now we get a couple of extra things. It's really just, remember, this last one, it's one extra thing. You get your NO2 and your H2O, just like CO2 and H2O or SO2 and H2O. But in addition, we're going to get an NO associated with it. And this is something that it's fair game for the test. I would ask you for any of these metathesis acid-base gas forming reactions that you should know what the products are going to be. Now, on my test, this is probably a less likely one to happen. Um, so I stress this one a little less than the others. But on the AP test, any of these are fair game. And question four is about writing some reactions. All of these would be fair game. So this is something that we can't afford to totally skip. All these are fair game for question four on the AP test, which is why I have to include it here. So as far as gas forming reactions go, the big thing you need to know is what do sulfides do? They make hydrogen sulfide. What do carbonates and hydrogen carbonates do? CO2 and H2O. What do sulfites do? Kind of the same thing, but SO2 and H2O. And then finally, nitrites, what do they do? Well, one extra thing. They just say no. They have an extra NO in it. So think of how they're similar and clump them together, and it makes it much, much, much easier to remember them.
So metathesis reaction summary. Now a reaction with two compounds, if they're both ionic or if they have acid base, remember um, must have an acid, so look for that acid there, then you're going to get this double replacement reaction or you're going to get a double replacement reaction that is a hidden gas forming acid base reaction because it doesn't look like double replacement when you see that salt in CO2 and H2O or the salt in SO2 and H2O. But remember, at its heart, it really is a double replacement reaction that just decomposes into other things. So, what you're typically going to get in these is salt and water plus some type of gas, usually CO2, SO2, um, NO2, depending on what the substance is. So this is just a summary of what we looked at. And that finishes our second set of notes from Chapter 4. So two ionic compounds or an acid base with hydroxide, you get the double replacement. If it's an acid with sulfide, carbonate, sulfide, or nitrate, it's going to be those.